Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 28th of March and we're a quarter of the way through 2021 already. Um, flying pretty, pretty quick. This week, uh, in terms of new videos, on Tuesday I posted kind of a, a deep dive into the new Azure AD external identities. So this really brings together B2B and B2C under this new umbrella but also add some really nice capabilities today for B2B. So I kind of walk through that and I demo all of the new capabilities. Then on Thursday, I released a video really going over Azure Update Management. The idea that I have Windows and Linux machines, these could be in Azure, they could be outside Azure, and really how I can patch them in an automated fashion. And today, kind of building on log analytics and Azure automation, and then kind of what's coming down the line. Uh, also Friday, I posted kind of another mini virtual mentoring session all about stop procrastinating. Um, so I guess you could watch that later. Uh, as always, this is useful. Uh, a like, subscribe, comment, and share is appreciated. Okay, so what was new this week? So on the compute side, this is really more about ISVs. So people that actually create images, maybe with a, a virtual appliance built into them or something, and they publish that actually to the Azure Marketplace. Well, previously, there was a whole set of steps required to kind of create a VHD and create a shared access signature and submit this thing. Well, now, very simply, I can have it in my shared image gallery and essentially publish it from there, doing away with all those other steps, um, to the Azure Marketplace. So it really just simplifies that whole process. Azure Batch now has a new set of virtual machine support. Now this includes the DCSV2. So remember, those are the virtual machines which have the Intel SGX functionality, that application level secure enclave for secure computing. It also includes the new HBV3 these are the AMD EPIC third gen processors that in preview, well, they have the new kind of VM level security. So there's nothing I have to change about the VM at all. The processor creates this key and encrypts the entire memory of the VM. And then of course the ncast 4 v 3 which again are AMD EPIC based, but this is the 7v12, the ROM processors. Uh, with the Tesla T4 NVIDIA GPUs. So this is fantastic for using kind of NVIDIA grid technology. It's really optimized for those compute intensive uh, GPU accelerated applications. Well now, all of those VMs I just mentioned, uh, I can now use with Azure Batch. On the networking side, kind of the big one here is Express Route Private Peering now with IPv6 support. So if we remember, so kind of remember what is private peering? So the whole point here is you have your network, then we have that huge Azure backbone network. Now that Azure backbone network at certain locations has kind of these points of presence, these edge locations, these carrier neutral facilities. And the point is me as a customer, well, I can use one of these locations, kind of these meet me's. So now my network, they're all redundant by the way, I can now extend my network to here and essentially through a cross connect, I've now connected my network to that Microsoft Backbone network. Now obviously also on that Microsoft Backbone network are things like Azure regions. So a particular Azure region, I can have for example a virtual network inside that Azure region. And what private peering does is well inside that I'm going to have a gateway and then through that express route connection I can enable private peering. So now hey from here through there with my routers and a Microsoft Enterprise Edge BGP sessions well I can now connect through and get connectivity to those things. Now, VNets have supported both IPv4 and IPv6 for a while. It's always dual stack. I, I have to have IPv4 as well. And obviously on-premises, I can have IPv4 
and IPv6. Well now on the express route private peering, I have the same thing. So I can do IPv4, IPv6. And it basically sits on top of that. So I create my private peering, then as kind of subcomponents, I can say, hey, I want IPv4, I want IPv6. When I introduce the IPv6, obviously I need a slash 125 that will get split into two 126s, or I just bring two 126s. That's for the two, I get the two redundant connections. You get the first IP from the range. The Microsoft gets the other IP from the range for things like the BGP. And now I can have IPv6. So you're bringing your own IPv6 address space, but I can now have IPv6 going over my express route. Um, today it's only in regions that support availability zones. So that's kind of the requirement um, to be able to use this um, in that private capacity. So again, it's in preview mode right now, but I can finally turn on uh, IPv6 with my private peering. From a storage side, so AZ copy v10.9.0 is in preview. And there's a few key features. I think probably the biggest one is now if I have storage in Google Cloud Platform, GCP, I can actually take that storage and actually now import it to Azure Blob, just in a regular storage account. There's new verbose scanning logs for debug purposes. Um, if I'm copying blobs actually within Azure, it can now maintain the tags. Um, the last modified time is now shown in the list command, but essentially um, some new capabilities added in there. And then miscellaneous. So there's a new management group hierarchy view. Again, it's just a, a visual thing, but it, it does actually make it nicer. If you ever kind of looked at this before, it wasn't that kind of friendly. So if we jump over, and if I just go to management groups, so you kind of, I can see, okay, um, there's my management group. So what I'm going to quickly do is turn off this custom portal thing, because this is the old view. So notice that I can't really see very much. So if I turn that off, so what's interesting actually on this machine, it's showing the old view. So this is what you may see. And if I try and enter the URL for what the new view is showing on my other machine, it doesn't work. But what you should see, and I'm cheating for a second, is this new hierarchical view. So I actually get this nice new view. It will show me the number of subscriptions. So there's this new hierarchy view, but they must be doing some kind of staggered or staged view, or there's something weird about this particular machine because strangely enough on this machine, it's on the same network, the same account and everything, um, I'm still getting the old view. So after this, I think I'm probably going to go and plan to try and work out. But there definitely is that new hierarchical view that I've been using for the past few days. So I need to go and work out what's happening there. But you kind of saw the picture of it. We now have custom domain support for Azure AD B to C. So B to C is the idea that, hey, I have customers and I want to have customer accounts. Maybe they're social identities, maybe local accounts. I don't want them in my regular Azure AD. So we can create this Azure AD B2C instance. Now that has this promise of customize every pixel, customize the flow. But one of the things you still would have seen, no matter what you did, is this B2C login.com at a certain point of that authentication flow. Well now through an integration with Azure Front Door, I can hide that. You'll only ever see your domain name now, along with all the customization. You won't have to see that B2C login.com. So now that's an option. Uh, I can go through and configure that as part of my flows. And then Azure AD Connect did a whole bunch of changes in this latest release. Now, if we look at it, uh, I think of it, it really breaks into four key parts here. So if we scroll through kind of the version history, the, the first one is, okay, sure, now it has these default kind of sync rules to limit the membership written back to 50,000 members. Okay. Um, it uses now kind of the V2 endpoint um, by default always. But now we have this added support for selective password hash synchronization. Now, ordinarily, if I turn this on, it sends the password hashes for all of the accounts. Now, what I can do is through an attribute, this admin description, 
if I have most of the accounts want to go, but I want to restrict some not sending their hash, I can set this PHS filtered value. Or if it's the opposite, or if I don't want most of them to go, but I want some of them to go, I can set it to PHS included. So now I can actually filter which accounts actually have their password hashes synchronized to Azure AD through that attribute. So that's a pretty nice deal. And then it also talks about this new PowerShell module, also this new single object sync commandlet. So if I'm trying to troubleshoot, and I kind of want to force a particular um, object to replicate using its kind of distinguished name, I can actually now force a sync of just that. And it goes through kind of a whole bunch of all the changes, but those are kind of the big ones, but some very nice functionality kind of now included in that latest version. There's a new dashboard edit for pinged, pinned log analytics parts on kind of a dashboard. So many, many things I can pin to my own custom dashboard. I can kind of do it all over the place. And I can always edit them. But what they've added is kind of a new edit experience. So if we go back over here, if I just quickly look at a dashboard, you can see I kind of have a log analytics part pinned in this dashboard. And notice these kind of icons I have. And it's this kind of second one from the right. But if I select this, and that just opens up an editing view that I can modify. I could see, well, what is it showing? I could tweak it and just apply it kind of live. So I've got this very nice view now to modify those log analytics parts that I have pinned to my dashboard. I don't have to kind of jump around. It's a very kind of immersive experience. So a nice little change there. And that's it. So that was all the new features for this week. I'm going to go and try and work out why on one machine I get the new management group view and I don't on the other. Um, but until next week, stay safe.